Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Nicholas Davenport, aka Mr. Mental Muscle, the CEO and founder of Mind Body One. And today we have a pretty interesting task that's made for kids. Now, obviously, it can be done by anyone, but I actually have my own daughter, Tiana, doing some cognitive conditioning drills that require math skills, working memory, and a variety of executive functions. Now, why is this important? Now, studies have shown that IQ is not the best indicator for overall intelligence because, one, it can be biased because you gotta ask yourself, what exactly is the IQ? test measuring. It could be subjective to a specific population or demographic. Now, outside of that, they found that working memory was a very good indicator of overall academic performance throughout school, all the way up to high school. Now, this can predict how well a student can perform in and out of the classroom. That's why it's so great to use working memory, because this involves holding information in real time, make sense of what's happening right now, and retrieving things from long-term memory to solve the problem at hand. So you can see how this is important outside of just school because when we solve problems, we have to be able to be critical thinkers and analyze at hand. Now, you're going to see a few drills going on that Tina's going to do. Now, first, she's going to warm up with a drill using the Stroop effect. Now, if you're not familiar with the Stroop effect, that's when the color is incongruent with the word. Now, on this task, we're going to use our brain active training task with the Stroop effect and some will match and some won't match. Now, what she's going to do, there's going to be a color assigned to a number. Red is one, blue is two, green is three, and yellow is four. Now, as the Stroop color is shown, she's going off the color of the ink, not the word written. So instead of just saying how it's typically done, red, blue, green, whatever the color is, she's gonna say the number that the color represents. So this is where the first bit of working memory comes in. So it just gets her thinking. Now she's gonna go through that and she's gonna call out the appropriate number based on the color. One. Four. Two. Four, one, three, two, three, two, one. Now, the second part of the warm up, you're gonna progress it. I'm gonna call out myself a number before the Stroop color is shown, and then she has to add that number. She hears auditory working memory, that's called the phonological loop. And then she has to process the Stroop color, add what number that represents to what I say, and call out the answer. So it's a little more challenging. You can see how I could scale this up or down. Ready? Yeah. One. Five. Two. Three. Three. Two. I mean, that's five. One. Five. Three. Six. One. Two. Two. Four. Now, the actual task at hand is gonna involve the fit light. Now, this is where some algebra comes in. Now, she's eight years old, about to turn nine, so she's in third grade, and she loves math, so she does pretty well at these, but you can scale this any kind of way, use lower digits, but I use a variety to challenge her as she got good at the lower digits. So basically, she's gonna present it with the same concept. Each color is gonna represent a number. Now, when the light comes on, that's gonna be the missing variable, and she's gonna have to solve the equation. So for example, if there's a seven, then the light comes on and red is one, then she's gonna add seven to red, which is one, which equals eight. She's gonna write that down and deactivate the light with her hand. That gives me how fast she was able to process, make sense of the equation, and do what she needs to do. So let's check her out, see how she does as she gets her mind right. Go. 6.5, all right? Good job, change it up. Go. Training mixed in? Yeah, and it's kind of hard, but because you have to do it on your in your head. But what were you able to do though? You were able to still do it, right? And you were able to do it fast. What was your fastest one? 3.6, I believe. 
So think about it. It was hard, but you were still able to do it. Would you think more kids should do stuff like this? Yes, and it helps you learn. Now that was great, guys. You saw how she was able to not only do the cognitive component, work on a working memory, be able to solve the equation. You can even see from the psychological aspect on how she kept her emotions or thoughts. Sometimes she got flustered. That's why I had to coach her up a little bit. But the point is, she was able to still finish the equation. Sometimes she got it in time, sometimes she didn't. But this with the other side of it, you talk about like taking tests or just school in general, can be intimidating for some kids. So this allows allows them to get those kinks out, those frustrations in a safe environment where there's no really high stakes and they can just get it out here because when they do it in the real world, they'll be able to accommodate it better because they're used to it. Like I always say, stress and anxiety and pressure, it's all about getting acclimated and having your default mode being better than it already is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was a great effort. Shouts out Tiana. Of course, I'm gonna be proud of her either way, but she did a great job. And thanks for tuning in. And as always, get your mind right.